acted on that and came got it. Yes. And when you came got it, all the devils in hell had to step back and watch you go get saved. All of them couldn't stop it. Jesus asked Peter, said, Peter, who do men say I, the Son of Man, am? He said, well, say some say John the Baptist, some Elijah. He said, yeah, but who do you say? He is to you who you say. He is to you what you say about him. And he said, well, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, Peter, man didn't show you this. He said, my father showed you this. Ever say the father showed me? The father. Say it again. The father showed you. One more time. The father showed you. So you can gain collective knowledge, natural knowledge to the brain. But God chose to bypass your brain. Aren't you thankful? Amen. Yes. Huh? Amen. Yes. I mean, I met some people that are brain dead. <laughs> Not in this area, way up north. <laughs> God is a spirit. And so those that worship him must worship him with their spirit in truth. Yes. Huh? In conjunction with the truth. Yes. And we'll say a lot of things you need to hear. <laughs> Isaiah 27, 2 or 3 he said, I'll keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon me. Yes. It must say mine. mine. Say it again. Mine. One mine. more time. Mine. Then he said in Genesis 11, when they built the Tower of Babel, whatever they can imagine to do, they can do. Say the word imagine. Imagine. Then also in Psalm 103, it says, I know you. I know your frame. It must say frame. 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 Say it again. Frame. Actually, the word is yet, sir. The word frame, imagination, and mind is all the same word. Your frame is how you're made. You're made in the image of God. Yes. How does God function? He sees things inside him and then speaks them out. Come on. Yes. Yes. I see them like a little deeper. Some of you are kind of <laughs> sitting on it. <laughs> Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinketh in his heart, yes. so is he. Yes. I'll give you an illustration. I'm going to kind of paraphrase if your kid folks come by, you say, oh, man, we're so glad to see you. Can y'all stay for dinner? And you're thinking, in here, dear God, I hope they can't. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 now here's what. Which one are you? Are you the one that wants to stay for dinner? Are you the one that says, dear God, I hope they can't stay? <laughs> As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yeah. This is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yes. Whether you like it, Admit it or believe it. You are producing on the outside what you are on the inside. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's how God functions. Yeah. That's how you function. Yeah. If you're surrounded in poverty, it's because you got it on the inside. Have you drove down the street and noticed that houses that have cars on blocks attract other cars on blocks? Yeah. <laughs> huh? If he might leave, please take your money with you. <laughs> Preaching is designed to change the image of how you see things. Oftentimes you get people healed out of a wheelchair because they see themselves inside in the wheelchair. Come on. You can't get them out of poverty because they've been schooled in poverty for 20, 30 years. Huh? Come on. Yeah. They keep every man in his jar. Every piece of uh, tin. Come on. Huh? Yeah. I, I, I think I'm going to get back on the platform for a while. <laughs> the spirit of seeing and the spirit of knowing. There's at least five Holy Ghost prayers in the New Testament teaching you how to pray in line with the Holy Ghost. Most people's prayers are unscriptural. Most people's prayers are unscriptural. God is not going to answer something that don't line up with his words. If grace don't provide it, faith can't produce it. That's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. You can't bleed God for another man's wife. Why? Because grace didn't provide that. Right. You got to stay with the ugly one you got. Amen. Just kidding, folks, lighten up. Amen. So grace has to provide it. 
then your faith can produce it. Yes, yes. yes. The five prayers you'll find in Ephesians chapter 1, uh, Colossians chapter 1, uh, Philippians chapter 1, then Ephesians chapter 3, I will quote Ephesians 3, 17. He said, open the eyes of their understanding. Yes. Do what? Yes. Open the eyes of their understanding. Yes. He's talking about seeing with your inside man, not your outside man. Your worst enemy is not the devil. It's not. He's been defeated. Your worst enemy is your unrenewed mind and leaning to your own natural thoughts and your own natural ability. I can take scripture and prove to you certain truths out of the Bible, but if God does not show it to you, you still won't get it. Come on. If the light of the Holy Ghost does not show you, you will not get it. You sit in church for 47 years and still don't get it. Come on. Huh? The menorah in the furniture of the meeting room of the tabernacle, the candlestick, the menorah, weighed 90 pounds. The, the oil flowed through there. It was the only light in the room. The light we should walk by is the light of the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. And not the light of your head. Right. Brother, you can't be head-led. you got to be heart-led. Yes, amen. amen. Head-led will get you in trouble. Yeah. Well, this is the way I see it. Well, where'd you get that? Huh? <laughs> When Jesus taught, they misunderstood him. They didn't get it. He said that you got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. They thought, ooh, cannibalism, ooh. He was talking about eating the word and drinking the spirit. He wasn't talking about cannibalism. People take the word and try to understand it with their physical brain. This is spiritually written and spiritually discerned. Yes. If you don't get it through your heart, you ain't going to get it. That's right, right. amen. If you don't amen. get it through your heart, you're not going to get it. No. Nope. That's right. Somebody say amen. 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 And, and so I'm just going to add live for a few minutes. In Kings, I'm just preaching, uh, chapter 17, 18, and 19, here one of the mightiest prophets, Elijah, uh, he, he shut up heaven with his prayer. He opened heaven with his prayer. He outrun the king's horses 20 miles. He raised the widow woman's child from the dead. I mean, he's not a novice. Huh? I said, huh? And then the Lord told him to gather up all the veiled prophets and have a contest and call fire down from heaven. And, brother, here comes the fire. And the next day... He himself, a prophet, killed 850 prophets. You don't want to mess with us. We'll cut you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> he killed 800. There was 400 prophets of Baal and 450 prophets of, of, of the grove. So he killed about eight. He took a sword. <laughs> he was bad. Little preacher man. <laughs> and slew 850 people. Don't you know people showed up for Sunday next Sunday? <laughs> huh? I mean, he's riding on a high. Riding on a high. And then chapter 19, verse 3, Jezebel said, I'm going to do to you what you did to the prophet. And it says in verse 3, he saw that. Now here come a messenger with a note. Says, I'm going to kill you like you killed him. And he said, He saw it. He saw it inside himself. Come on. Yeah. He, come on. he run like a scalded dog. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he killed 800 prophets and now the Avon lady run him out of town. <laughs> With a note. With a note. Not a sword, a note. He just read a note. So he finds him a juniper tree and writes him a country merchant's home. I'm so lonesome I could cry. Huh? I'm the only one who serves the Lord. God said, dude, I got 7,000 good preachers down in Oklahoma. <laughs> it is amazing when you start seeing the negative, yeah, come on. hear more negative come. Yeah, come on. Yeah, huh? That's good. And after a while, it becomes depression. Yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with you that are depressed? You're focusing on the wrong thing. Yes. Get up, comb your hair, put your teeth in, and start looking at something else. Yes. Yes. You're full of yourself. Yes. I, I, I know this is a little tough. The people who are critical and carnal, 
They don't know it, but they're full of pride. Yeah. They're trying to figure out everybody. You can't figure out spiritual things with natural brain. That's right. Huh? Amen. Jesus said, destroy this temple, and I'll raise it in three days. They thought, 46 years it took to raise. He wasn't talking about a building. He talking about his physical body. Yes. On the cross, when he died, he raised in three days. But see, if you're trying to approach things in the natural realm, you'll always come short. It'll always be your opinion. You'll always be carnal. Right. And then you got to come up with the excuse. Well, the reason I didn't receive, uh, you know, God's trying to work something out. Listen, folks, faith's always now. Yes. Faith, faith is always now. Yes. Huh? It's not what God's going to do. It's what he's already did. Yeah, yes. yeah, amen. Yes. Huh? And so he got to talking. I can tell what's in you when you talk. Sometimes I listen, I know more about you than you do. Because you live with you, you deceived yourself. Come on, come on. From the abundance of the mouth, the heart, the, heart, the mouth telleth the office on them. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Huh? And so <laughs> Elijah said, Well, I'm no better than my fathers. What does that tell you? He thought he was. Yeah. Because he's the only one that raised the dead. He's the only one that should have heaven. He's the only one out running the king's hook. He's the only one. See, when you get the thing that's you, come on, come on. you're headed for a train wreck. Yeah. I can do all things through Christ with strength. Yeah. Don't mean you can do all things. Yeah. It's through the Christ that's strength you. Yeah. I'm more than a conqueror, but yeah. through him that loved me. Your connection got me through him. Yeah. Yes. yes. This is not very preaching. You are saying amen. 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 <laughs> and so, listen to me. God actually had to replace him with Elisha. Yeah. If you get to follow yourself. Come on. Yeah. If you don't get this image out of here, the word frame, the way you're made, the word frame, the word mind, the word imagination all also means conception. Conception. Your eyes of your spirit is where you conceive things. That's where inventions come from. Before there's a piano, someone saw it on the inside. Yeah. Before there's a car, somebody saw it on the inside. Yeah. Huh? Before they build a house, somebody has to have some plans. Yes. Somebody has to see it. So if we'll learn to train ourselves to walk by what we see in here, you got to see yourself healed, see yourself delivered, yeah. see yourself prospered. Yeah. But if you don't, if I don't care, you, I can anoint your head with oil until it all the hair off your head. <laughs> until you change the image on the inside, it will not change. Yes. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're made that way. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Yes. That's how you are. That's, who you are. That's what you'll produce. Come on, brother. Amen. Amen. Huh? You ever see why it's always critical and always negative? <laughs> Things go wrong all the time. Yep. Yeah. They produce it, didn't know it. <laughs> you may not like this, but I'm leaving town. <laughs> huh? You're designed by God. He says, from the abundance of a good man's heart, good things come to pass. From the good treasure of an evil man's heart, evil things come to pass. Now, everybody here will agree that evil men that rob banks and kill people and molest children, that evilness comes out of their heart. But then you get over to the Christian world and we think God's going to do everything. Honey, He not. Your heart's going to do it. If your heart don't do it, it won't get done. I ain't getting no amens. I'm going to create a, 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 a recorder. I punch the button, it's going to say, Preach it, Mother Baby, you're doing real good. Amen, brother. Go ahead and preach it. I'm going to encourage myself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> and so then here comes Elisha. Next king, chapter 4, 6. And uh, he, was, he knew the, the secrets of uh, the king of Syria, war plan, and he was telling Israel, and so they Syria is being defeated. So they gathered their army, and they're outnumbered 10,000 to 1. And so, Elisha's helper began to wring his hands. He yeah. said, what in the world are we going to do? 
And he said, there's more with us yeah. than there are with them. Lord, open his eyes and let him see. Well, people don't understand, we're so deadened by this natural realm, but there's a spiritual realm here yeah. that we're supposed to operate in, yes. see in, walk through, walk by, live in. Come on, somebody. Yes. And if you don't, you can be born again, love God, but if you, if you, if you do it natural, you'll always be defeated. Yes. You'll always have heartache, always need to bail out. But if you get over and walk in the spirit realm, faith sight. Yes. Faith sees what others can't see. Yes. Right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Glory. Amen. Yes. If I had a mirror, I'd turn it on y'all. Y'all look so sad. <laughs> if you're happy, tell your face. <laughs> it's in the book of Jeremiah. He said, go ahead and preach it and pay no attention to their face. Amen. Preach it, Jeremiah. Preach it. I said, you ain't been to camp. <laughs> Just kidding, folks. Lighten up. So the way you're made is to produce what you're full of. Yes. yes. And whether you like it or not, you are. Yeah. Now, I've had people I'd pray for, and I, I seemingly couldn't get them delivered, couldn't get them healed. You know why? They're full of their problem. Yeah. yeah. No, Until I get some word in them, and they change, and they see themselves different. Yes. yes. Huh? That's right. Are you listening to me? Yes. Because when I leave, when the anointing lifts, and you go out in the world, you see me? You're going to change back, walk by sight again. God, come on. Faith sees in the spirit realm. Not in the natural realm. Yes. And so you're a spirit being. Yeah. Now, let me go a little further. <laughs> Elisha probably saw those before the other guy and wasn't worried. People who walk by faith don't get nervous. Yeah. Huh? Good. Yeah. Brother Mimi, what are we going to do? What we gonna... I've been there a hundred times. When a Christian gets sick and they're in the hospital and all the kid folks are walking up down the aisle and saying, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I said, settle down. We're going to believe God. Yeah. You've been sitting in Sunday school for 47 years and one, one child. You may not like it. Listen to it. The Bible, the book you supposedly love, says you can't trust God with your money. You can't trust him with anything else. That's what it says. That's Amen. the Amen. least. Yes. Yes. That's Hallelujah. the least. You know, most people can't. Yep. You know why? They can't see where any uh, money's coming from. Yeah. That's, That's true. Huh? That's true. That's true. I said, huh? Yeah. See, when God's your source, you don't say things like, well, I want a fixed income. Well, who fixed it? <laughs> huh? That's what people see. That's how they act. And they act and plan according to their fixed income. Yeah. But if God is your source, come on. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Open her eyes and let them see. There's already there thousands and thousands of angels. The unbelieving helper said, More with us? One, two. Ten thousand. Preacher, I think you got it wrong. <laughs> come How on. do you think people reacted to Jesus? He walk into town and say, me and my father are one. Made them so mad. They wanted to stone him. Yep. Yeah. They were so carnal. Yes. Carnal will get upset with me. Yes. Carnal will get upset with you when you're spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Saying you believe in God, you heal. While you ain't healed, you still coughing. Come on, brother. Amen. On. You're going with what you hear. You're going with what you see. Right. I'm going with what I believe. Amen. Yeah. It'll separate yeah. you. Absolutely. Huh? I mean, the Pharisees and Sadducees knew every jot, every tittle. They could quote you the five first books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, word for word, times the 13. Yes. Word yeah. for word. Huh? Jesus came to town, didn't even know him. Yep. They are Christians, bless their heart. They go to church year after year and don't really know God. When they lose, it scares them. Yeah. Yeah. I did a tape in the Bible with R.W. Shamblock years ago. Oh, close. See, that's probably 17, 18 years old. They brought a wheelchair case here. And, 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 and he said, y'all believe God can heal this? Oh, yeah, praise the Lord, yeah. And so we all prayed, you know, our best prayer. Yeah, I got up walking. I said, well, look in there. <laughs> surprise. Come on. Well, if you're surprised, well, you wouldn't believe it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 
Can we say amen? Amen. And, and so what God has to fix first is the inside of you, or you'll just flip back and change. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Want to ask you a question you can't answer? <laughs> How come at the tomb of Jesus, Mary didn't know Jesus? Oh, he's the gardener. Yeah. She had walked with him, worked with him, washed his feet, fed him. How come she didn't know him? Well, when he came back, he's now spirit. Yeah. He has a spiritual body, not a physical body. People are trying to see spiritual things through physical eyes. Yes. How's that working for you? Not very well, because you can't. Amen. She didn't know him until he said, Mary. Mary. She said, oh, Master, it's you. She knew him by the Spirit. Yeah. 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 He appears to two men on the road to a man. They're griping and complaining about how the prophet Jesus had been killed, and he's standing there walking with them. Yeah. I mean, the, the problem is already solved, and they're still stirring the problem. Come on. Yes. Wow. Yes. He said, why are you so sad? It's your communication that makes you sad. Well, haven't you heard they killed, they killed the prophet? Well, that was yesterday. Yeah. That's what they knew, heard, saw in the natural realm. Yeah. Had they would have believed, in three days I'll raise up, it wouldn't have bothered them. Yeah. Now, we think we're pretty spiritual. But every one of us cried generals. Yeah. Uh, did you hear? I lost my mama. She ain't lost. She just moved. <laughs> if you really believe the Bible, you rejoice. Yes. Mama is where she's longed to be for all of her life. Yes. To die is to gain. We're so natural and carnal. We cry for ourselves. Yes. They wouldn't come back. I don't care what you offered them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, Jesus appeared to his own disciples. <laughs> he said, uh, y'all caught anything? <laughs> He's more blown. <laughs> y'all caught anything? Nah, we ain't caught nothing. He said, cast your net on the right. Boy, when he said that, they knew who he was. Yeah, come on, come on. Yes. You can't gauge things by your natural Hallelujah. appearance you, or natural Jesus. emotion. Yes. Yes. You'll yes. miss him every time. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Many times in service, God is moving, and, and, and someone will analyze it, try to figure things out, and miss God, go home defeated, yeah. go home without the blessing God had for them. Because they never got out of the flesh over into the spirit. <laughs> So let's go to a real tough one. Balaam. Balaam's riding his donkey to town. <laughs> the donkey could see more than the prophet. Yep. <laughs> I don't mean it's wrong with you. But there's a lot of pastors. Come on, bro. Don't see very far. Right. Yeah. All they see is their little box or a little handful of people. Yeah. My church. I have said, what are you doing in my town? I didn't know God died and left you in charge. I'm sorry. You know it's your town. Come on. You don't own people. Come on. You're their overseer, but you don't own them. No. Huh? And, and so the donkey, you know, he 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 brushes up against the wall because that that Abraham got a sword in his hand. He gonna kill Balaam. Well, you know, the donkey had more eyesight, insight, revelation sight than the prophet did. Yeah. This so-called seer couldn't see nothing. Come on. And so the donkey, <clears throat> well, Balaam, you know, said, hit him with a stick. You know, all the time we fight the very thing we need. Come on. Come on. That's right. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Then gets on him, goes a little further, and he belts out to the right, you know, to the pastor, and he hits him again. Gets on him, right, and then he sits down on top of him. He said, I, so I wish I had a sword, I'd kill you. Now, how stupid can you get? 
this donkey says to him, I served you all these years. I've never crushed your foot. I've always served you. Why do you beat me three times? I wish I had a sword I'd kill you. He's off the chart. You've got the best fundraiser in town. You've got to talk to the donkey. Oh, you got to sell tickets. Huh? He asking God for a sign sitting there talking to a talking donkey. How much God do you need? I've had people get healed, get delivered, and get saved and go off and criticize me. Amen. Amen. They did Jesus. Mm-hmm. Huh? I'm going somewhere. All the time we read the Bible and we just read over things. And we shouldn't. That's the that God has given the body this study so they can bring things out to help you. The Bible says that Jesus is the, I look song, he's the, my glory and lifter of my head. Yes. 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 He said in Matthew 21, when you hit trouble, lift up your head because your redemption draweth nigh. Yes. When Jesus fed the 5,000, he took the bread and lifted up his head. Yes. There's something going on here about lifting up your head. Yeah. He prayed for the man in Mark chapter 6 that was blind, and he saw men like trees walking, and he said, lift your head up. And he lifted his head up again, and he saw plainly. There's something here we're not getting. Hmm. Lifting up your head is the word uh, uh, anablepho. Anablepho, which means seeing twice. Hmm. Seeing twice. He didn't just raise his head. He looked into his spirit and saw himself breaking bread and feeding everybody. That's good. Yes. Huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. You got to see it. If you can see it, yes. you can believe it, yes. you can have it. Yes. If you good. can't see it, you can't receive it, you'll never have it. Come on. See yourself healed. Yes. See yourself delivered. See yourself prospered. Yes. yes. Thank you, Lord. If you don't, you never will be. That's huh? Yes. Seeing you, with your heart. You can see more. Your heart is your spirit. Yes. Seeing more with your heart is far better than you see. You, you see, just like we, we have people, uh, you know, Garth Brooks uh, went to Nashville and they told him he couldn't sing. And so he turned around and headed back to Oklahoma. He get about halfway back and said, Shucky, ducky, I can sing. He goes right back and becomes <laughs> one of the best singers in the world. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Huh? They told Michael Jordan he couldn't play basketball, cut him off the team. But he saw. Yes. Uh, he saw it on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. You need to realize who you are. I say now preach Christ in you, the hope of glory. But when you see you got the healer inside on, of you, you got the provider on the inside of yes. you, whether you're on the inside or yes. yes. you're on the outside. Yes. Yes. So your biggest enemy is not the devil, it's your unrenewed mind. So in the five prayers that I know of in the New Testament, he prays, Lord, open their eyes. Let them be able to comprehend what they already have. He didn't pray, oh, God, give them some money. Oh, God, get the devil off of them. Come on. He said, let them see what they already got. I don't think we have close to realize what we have on the inside. I like to walk around. Almighty God is my Father. Jesus Christ is my brother. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm wall to wall, Holy Ghost. I I sneeze in tongues. I snore in tongues. (laughs) (laughs) But what if you are born again, but you don't walk in the light of the Spirit, and you try to figure things out? Time and time again, he said, lean not your own. That's right. Don't, 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 don't. Don't mess with me. I've been preaching 44 years. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar was so vain. Carly Simon wrote him a song, You're So Vain. <laughs> <laughs> he built a statue of himself, solid gold. He wanted everybody to bow down to him. Huh? Pride will always bring you down. Carnal Christian, carnal thinking is the enemy. Yes. Huh? Yes. I've had people say, well, why do 
do you do this and why do you do that? Well, you're trying to figure out carnal why I do things spiritual. Sometimes I don't even know why I do things. That's called Holy Ghost behavior. Come on, yes. come on. I'm in East Moline, Illinois, preaching probably 30 years ago, and I walk out there and I lay my hand on the guy and I say, God loves homosexual. Well, I didn't know he was a homosexual. Amen. Amen. But God did. Wow. I walk over here and I, I lay my hand on somebody. I said, God loves alcoholic. I didn't know he was alcoholic, but God did. Yes. Huh? Yes. See, sometimes you just act out what you see on the inside. Absolutely. Yeah. Sometimes people come up in front of me. And I was to see myself hit on the sunk. Well, I'm down in Louisiana, and, and a guy came for prayer, and he said, well, maybe I'm going in the morning, I got 16 pulpery ulcers. He said, I'd like you to pray for him. I said, what do you want the Lord to do? People don't understand. Locate their faith. Come on, yeah. come on. Do you want the doctor's hand yeah. to be guided while he operates, or you want the Lord to heal you? There you go. Oh, huh? Good. Yeah. Huh? God can heal you by instantly, but your faith may not be there to conceive it. Right. He said, I want to be healed. Well, I was sitting there and I saw myself punch him in the belly. He was, yeah, like that right there. Bowed over. I said, go home, eat some, eat some uh, etouffee, some crawfish, or, or some jambalaya. He said, brother baby, will you preach my funeral? Because if I'm not healed, I, this will kill me. <laughs> he came back the next night, sitting on the front porch at 6.30. They gave him the diet. The, the ulcers had no ulcers anymore. Amen, Woo! amen. True. Huh? Now see, he was healed on the gift. He was healed on the gift of the Spirit. Right. Huh? But you can't always uh, plan on the gifts to manifest. Come on. But you can always depend on the Word, Murphy. Yes, yes. are, are you listening to me? Yes. And so I'm there in Lake Charles, and one preacher, bless his darn heart and empty head, said to me, he said, Brother Becky, he said, uh, said uh, uh, he had a doctor's report, and a bad doctor's report, uh, illness in his body. He said, uh, what am I going to do? I said, well, let's believe God. He said, well, I, I can't. So I'm fit. I said, well, you better go to the doctor. He said, what my people think? I said, well, if you don't go to the doctor, I think you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know how to believe God, don't know how to trust no, God, you better on, do brother. something. Yes, amen. amen. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Don't get mad at me. And a lot of people think they're very much more spiritual than what they are. But you cross them. Huh? And their flesh will resurrect. Yeah. Huh? And you'll find it's much alive and dominating. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? All you church folk wants to vote. If you can show me voting in the New Testament, I'll kiss your mother on his whole face. <laughs> People try to voice their opinion. Come on. Well, I just don't think we can afford a new parking lot. Friend of a friend of mine said, uh, Brother Megan, I think you ought to call this gentleman uh, down in another state. Your ministry can bless him. So a month to went by and I called and said, Sir, we have a mutual friend. He feels like our ministry can bless your, your church. He said, Well, now, Brother Megan, we're just a small church. We're all sick. We're all broke. All on fixed income. I said, Brother, is any of the Word of God working for y'all? <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> Amen. In the Old Testament, he said, I've given you the land. Go take it. Yeah. Huh? Oh, that's good. But they, most of them, saw themselves as grasshoppers. Yeah. And so the devil saw them as grasshoppers. But there's a couple of boys that got delivered from the grasshopper spirit. Yes. And they said, we going to kick devils and take names. Yes. They're just bread for us. That means we're going to eat their lunch. Yeah. Yeah. And, and listen, the devil always speaks evangelistically. That means he stretches his yes. <laughs> They come back and say, oh, said the land is just eat up with giants. There's only three. Three giants. Three. There's over 60,000 fighting men in Israel. One rock would have buried those three giants. 60,000 rocks would have killed them. When they went into Jericho, the harlot, Rahab, now she's in heaven. 
And when you get there, drop the harlot part. Yes. It's called a Rahab. Yes. She said, we know that God has given you the city. The devil knows it, and God's own people don't know it. Come on. He knows he's defeated. Come on, somebody. Yeah. But until you see him defeated, Sometimes I feel like you're slapping people. They, they tell me how big the devil is, how mean the come devil on, is. Come on. No, he's not. No, he's not. He can't do anything you don't give him place to do. Right. So if he has place in your life, it's because you gave it to him. Right. He could not walk in the Garden of Eden and slap Eve and kill Eve and kill Adam. He had to get them to poison themselves. Yes. He can't rob a liquor store. He can't rob a bank. He can't pull a trigger on a gun. Right. I'm amazed at the stupidity of mankind. The hypocrisy. We're living in a day, you may not like this, full of hypocrisy. Yes. Yeah. Hollywood especially. They'll wear clothes you can see through. Yes. Clothes that push stuff up and stick it in your face. Yeah. And then holler, sexual harassment, sexual harassment. Well, if you stick a banana in front of a monkey, he's going to grab it. Huh? And then holler, no guns, no guns, no guns, no guns. Every stinking movie they make's full of guns. They're guarded by guns. They live behind gates. Huh? Next time they holler protection, I'm going to send them a sign that says, gun free zone. <laughs> Hypocrisy. <laughs> Hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. That's what carnal thinking is. Yeah. Saying you believe in one thing, yeah, but you really believe in another. Yeah. You're trusting in your own ability. Nebuchadnezzar, his pride brought him down. He spent seven years like an animal until his mind returned to him and he lifted up toward heaven, lifted up his head, Fourth chapter, Daniel, lift up his head twice. He's looking to heaven. He said, there's no God like this God. Pride brought him down, but when he lifted up, he saw on the inside how great God was. His reason came back. His clarity came back. Yes. Huh? Yes. You start seeing more and thinking right when you look up towards heaven. Yes. Set your affections on things yes. above amen. and amen. not on the earth. Yes, amen. amen. Now, I'm trying my best to help you. I was raised in a, in a county, and you always saw somebody in the county that thinks they're bad. You know, I whoop you up, I beat you up, and I'm gonna hit you so hard your grandkids gonna feel it. You know. <laughs> Bible said, deceitful and men, mean men, only live out half their lives. Mean people don't usually live very long. Amen. Amen. That's true. Because they're mean on the inside. Are you listening to me? Yeah. I'm going. God looks at your heart. Yeah. He don't look at the outside. And so he's trying to change the image of what you have on the inside because it keeps producing. The very thing, thing people don't want, they keep talking about, keep reproducing it. Yes. They don't know why they still got it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Amen. You keep talking poverty, keep talking sickness, keep talking lack. Yeah. You just keep producing it. Say, I don't know why God let all my teeth fall out. You ever heard of a toothbrush? <laughs> <laughs> it's what's in you. It's what's in you. I've seen well-looking saints. I mean, look real nice, real pretty. But you cross them. <laughs> and brother, the real them comes out. Amen. So who are you? The one that puts on an act in front of everybody? Mm. See, I'm the same behind the scenes. I'm the same at Walmart. I'm the same where you see me. I'm the same. Amen. Huh? I, 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 I. Sometimes I'm forced to have fellowship with preachers. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll get up behind the pulpit and get real petty counsel. Tell you right now, God is hey, what I mean, all in heat. And, and they get out there with having coffee and they undo everything they said from the pulpit. That's true. Amen. Oh, huh? Amen. That's true. Now, which one are you? Yeah. Are you the one that's preaching? Are you the one that's talking differently behind the scenes? 
you're the one behind the scenes. Yeah. Because that's the real you coming out. Somebody say amen. I'm about to roll. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. even Jesus would look up and look up and he would see himself. And so when I go to minister to someone, I look inside and see the heel before I touch them. That's true. That's oh. true. That's good. If you don't, let me say it. I'm smarter than you, than you think. You remember when the disciples brought the boy to Jesus? They couldn't cast the devil out? Would you like to know why? I can tell you what. I've been there. Uh, this boy was demon-possessed, and he would cast himself in the fire, foam at the mouth, and so when they went to cast the devil out of him, the devil threw the fit. And then he began to see yeah. The vomit. You see. Yeah. Huh? And that kind of unbelief, you have to live a fasted life yeah. to deal with that kind of unbelief because right. your senses took over. I was over here in Marshville, Indiana, in Marshville, Missouri, a few years ago, pre survival. This lady came up and she had had epileptic uh, seizures all her life. She hadn't had one in 12 years. We went to pray for her, and I'm telling you, she had an epileptic seizure right there in front of me and God and everybody. I thought she was going to tear up the carpet. Huh? But I didn't. I did, didn't move me. I didn't flinch. You know, she never had another. Amen. See, that devil ripped and raved coming out. Come on. But if I would have wavered, Come on, come on. Wavers and she's nothing from the Lord. Come on, somebody. Yes. Right. People are real Good. quick to change their mind on the inside mm -hmm. when they don't get what they want. Yes. Yep. And so the disciples saw him flaunching in the fire, and, and that's where they couldn't cast him out. But Jesus didn't waver. Amen. He saw Amen. him healed on the inside. Yes, it yes, happened yes. on the outside. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. So if you're going to be successful in your Christian walk, you can't allow to be around certain people that will affect you and bring you down. Amen. Yeah. Right. I'm trying my best to help you. You can't hang around with fools. Amen. You can't hang around with unbelief. Amen. It'll get in you and you don't even know it. Huh? Yes. You gotta be careful who you marry. Some good old boy. Marry a young girl and she's tied in a bark on a tree. About ten years later, she done converted him. He won't spend a nickel. Think I hit a stone. Amen. Oh, amen. Everything you do affects you. Yeah. yeah. Who you work around. Yeah. yeah. Huh? It affects your spirit, what you're around. He said, guard your heart. Out of your heart is the forces of life. That's where the image is changed. That's where you're productive. The word frame means that your that your spiritual womb. If you can imagine it, you can have it. If you can see it, you can conceive it. Now it may take some days for your spirit to produce it. Why did God have to have a virgin to produce a baby? Why did you say, baby Jesus? Amen. Because he don't have no authority in there. Y'all look at me like, what? He has power. He has no authority. He gave the authority to man. Now, he has the power, but he can't do it unless you agree with him. He can't save you. He can't heal you. I prayed for people. He didn't know why they didn't get healed. And the Lord said they're, they're sick on the inside. They want to die on the inside. Come on. They want to let him come on somebody. Yes, you know? yes. I don't care how much you pray, how much you believe, you can't override what's on the inside of somebody. Yes. You can't get them saved if they don't want it. No, I can take a 45 stick in your ear, you'll pray the sinner's prayer. <laughs> Cock, block, red or rock, you will pray. <laughs> but if your heart don't mean it, it didn't mean nothing. No. You straight ain't going to shoot you. <laughs> it has to be a heartfelt prayer. God is always about the heart. Always. He's always about the heart. Somebody say amen. amen. So the whole, and when Paul prayed for Philemon, he said, if you want your faith to work, continually say what's in you in Christ. Your faith spawns from your relationship or your union with Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. When you start seeing who you are in Christ and your identity, you hear this time and time again. I, I'm just an old sinner. Save my grace. No, you're not. 
You're a saint saved by grace. Yes. If you're a sinner, get saved. Yes. Right. People think it's humble by debasing yourself. You're not humble by debasing yourself. Like, like Pastor said, well, go. Jesus didn't get on to, 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 to John the Baptist. That's right. Yeah. Paul, when, when the church of Corinth was not living very well, he told them what there was in Christ. Yeah. You're Christ. You're life. You're blessed. You're that. Huh? Amen. Magnify what you want to grow. Come on. That's, good. That's good. Feed what you want to grow. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You know, here's where you have to be careful. Let's say Sister Fluffy. Goes on a diet. And now she's skinny. But she'll walk into church now she's skinny. Go, Ooh, they're fat. You were 90 days ago. So you have to be careful because you're not better because you know more. Come on. Come on, come on. You were carnal on that last week or last month. Yeah, yeah. Just thank God for the light you have. Hallelujah. And walk in that light and let us have a whole man. Here's the problem. If the light that's in you be darkness. Yes. How great is that darkness? Right. Yeah. Now, please listen to me. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yeah. Well, what in the world? If God don't have it for you, you can't believe for it. Listen to me. I cannot believe that I'm going to be the n next number one quarterback of Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> It just ain't going to happen. <laughs> huh? Now, I can use my imagination and fantasize, but God didn't provide that. Right. Come on. Huh? Are you listening to me? Yeah. People go through life wanting to be a preacher when God didn't call them. Come on. They want to be a pastor. God didn't call them. Yes. Huh? Right. It's what you do. You frustrate the grace of God all your life. Failure at your failure. Well, I just don't know why God don't. He, you can't believe in something he didn't grace you with. That's right. Amen. Now, Amen. There's no fear of me moving here and taking over children's church. <laughs> it just ain't going to happen. Huh? But a lot of people think they're way up here, seriously. And they're not there. The Bible says, think soberly. Yes. Huh? Buddy. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be uh, another Benny Hinn. Uh, he ain't got one. He don't even know one. Right. Yeah. Uh, I've had people say, move over, Benny Hinn, I'm in town. Well, you know, that's pride, don't you? Come on. Pride will take you down. Yes. Huh? Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. So, so, here's a way to stay humble. You want to stay humble? Oh, there's so many blessings in humility. Humility is the key of being spiritual. Yes. Humility is the key of being spiritual. Because I've preached for 44 years and I've studied. I, God don't love me anyone loves you. That's right. I'm not even better than you are. Right. I may live better. I may know more. But the thing is, God, God loves me and you equally. Right. Huh? I don't think I'm better than you. Come on, come on. These preachers wouldn't come to a small church like this. They wouldn't come. I work with preachers that they sign contracts. $7,000 a night I won't come. Amen. Wow. $10,000 a night I won't come. Amen. Wow. I'm serious. Yep. Are you listening to me? Wow. And, and, and so they think, think, think a lot of themselves. Yeah. But I always believe y'all live by faith. Yeah. Come on. Yes. And in some places the, the, the finance is not as good as others, but God always makes it up. Amen. Yeah. Somewhere else. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's just in God is your source. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Then one guy flew in to a friend of mine, and he's charging $3,000 per song. Wow. Amen. I said, I, I'll just get his tape and put it on the tape recorder and play it. <laughs> save my money. <laughs> so we say amen. amen. Uh, let me close with it. I don't know if you know this or not, but most people's idea of God is wrong. They think he's mean. They say he'll break your leg to save you. Come on, come on. Thank this is all wrong. The true nature of God is His mercies endure forever. Yes. Yes. He is kind to a fault. If God has a fault, He overblesses. Mm -hmm. He overblessed Lucifer and He fell. He overblessed Adam and He fell. Huh? Humility will take a, a pride will take you down. Yeah. Humility is the key to long life and success. 
the way to stay humble is already realize it ain't you. Right. It's the God in you. Oh, amen. Yes. Amen. Okay, you it again. I might go back to my donkey. <laughs> donkey riding in the town. And said, talking to his other friend, donkey. He said, boy, I guess they can was waving palm leaves at me. Said, you're the coolest donkey in town. <laughs> he said, boy, it's not you. It's the guy you're giving the ride to. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So if there's any goodness in me, it's God. Amen. Amen. Huh? Any goodness in you, it's God. Yes. Always maintain a life of thankfulness. Yes. 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 That way you're saying God is your yes. God is the one that graced you. It's not your ability. Mm -hmm. Nobody has a right to, to brag or to boast. Right. Yes, we are his workmanship, but it's by the grace of God that's right. that that guy on the street out there, you can be him. Mm -hmm. The guy that's homeless, you can be him. Yeah. But aren't you glad you surrendered? Yes. Huh? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So this is the devil is really not a problem to Christians who know who they are. That's right. Yeah. Amen. 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 And he'll move when you draw nigh to God and resist the devil. Yes. yes. Well, I resisted him twice, but he didn't leave. You just told me you didn't draw nigh to God. You're not submissive. That's good. We ought to be practicing humility so much, we wear it like clothes. Yeah. Peter said, humble yourself of the mighty hand of God. Casting all your care over on the Lord, for he cares for you. Oh, when you like carry you. care, whether you like it or not, you're prideful. Yeah. Yes. Trying to handle it yourself That's instead good. of giving it to God. That's good. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. See, pride comes in a lot of different packages. Yes. Yep. It's always it will bring you down and humility. God wants you exalted. He just don't want you exalted. Exalt you in due season when it won't hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what if God picked you up and put you over a major broadcast like TVN or one of the major broadcasts and did $100 million a month? Yeah. It would start your shirt. <laughs> she wouldn't know what to do. If you can't leave God for a candy bar, can't leave him for a headache, come on, come can't on. leave him to put $20 in, you know, you know what I have thousands? Amen, amen. Can I help you? Can I help you? Yeah. Several years ago, uh, I was chatting home from a revival, and uh, I was about what, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and uh, didn't hardly have two nickels to rub together. And I pulled into the hometown there, and it was late in the evening, and uh, he said, pull, in the, pull into that real estate office. I said, what for? He said, pull in there. I said, okay. So I walked in there, and I said, uh, she said, can I help you? I said, I don't know. <laughs> she said, well, what are you looking for? I said, well, I guess I'm looking for some land. I'm in a real estate office. I said, I guess I'm looking for some land real cheap, no, nothing down, and the owner carried the note. <laughs> she said, uh, Mr. Bentley, the land right behind your house is for sale. Yeah. I no. said, you're kidding me. She said, no. Yeah. I said, uh, well, well, he carried the note. She said, well, he's got some medical bills. He needs the cash. Well, I didn't have any. I, I said, okay, get him on the hook. I talked to him. I said, he lived in Granbury, Texas. I said, uh, uh, brother, I said, uh, hear that land? So, yeah, he said, it is. He said, are you that preacher that gave me a drink of water last year when it was hot? I said, that's me. He said, you can have it. Wow. He, I bought that land. I called my banker. I said, I got 40 acres behind me there. He said, go ahead and write him a check. I bought that for $12,000. Amen. Wow. Amen. That land peaked up to 250000 Wow. Yeah, come on. What if I was too carnal yes. and talked myself out of it? Yeah. Huh? Oh, I got another story. You missed it. I ain't, I ain't my first coming home. Wow. And so year two, three goes by, and I, I'm driving home, and, and the Lord said, the poor girl said, oh, it doesn't. Here we go. <laughs> Didn't have a clue. Walter said, Mr. Baby, you're right. The land right behind you is for sale, behind the hand. <laughs> and I said, really? Yeah. It's, it's for sale. Amen. Amen. And so I contacted the owners, you know. I bought 90 acres. I feel bad now. I actually stole it. 90 acres for $25,000. Whoa. Wow. Uh, wow. Uh, a few years later, I sold it for $110,000 and put 90000 in the ministry. Amen. Amen. Wow. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Uh, yeah. Does it profit to be led by your spirit? Yes. Amen. Uh, does it benefit yes. 
I'm going to go ahead and open this can, uh, serve this can of beans. I was 19. No, 21. 20, 21. And I had my own business and, and had a guy working for me. And the guy invited me to go to, to Kentucky to preach revival. And I said, I ain't lost nothing in Kentucky. <laughs> and uh, so I went to sleep. And, I, and the Lord wouldn't let me sleep. So I tossed and turned and tossed and turned and tossed. And finally, about two, we didn't have cell phones back then. Finally, I got my man, my hired man up and said, drive over to Colgate and tell that preacher I'll go with you and preach for hour. Mm. Two weeks later, I was married. Oh, wow. I still ain't figured out what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I think she put something in the water. <laughs> Here's a divine connection. Yes, yes, amen, amen. If I'd have tried to figure it out in my head, I'd have missed the whole thing. I ain't lost nothing in Kentucky. But I sure did gain something. There you go. Huh? Man. And so I promised her if you'll marry me, I'll get you a tent and buy you some tea, buy you some shoes. <laughs> <laughs> She's held me to it. <laughs> isn't God good? Amen. Amen. What's the chances of somebody from Oklahoma meeting someone from Kentucky? Amen. I'm in another story. I'm in... Uh, Tuttle, Oklahoma. And my, my wife's son in law is pastoring church there. <laughs> wife's son in law. And uh, I go up there to uh, just visit the church, you know. And I believe it was Jeff Rose sent me two or three hundred dollars in the mail. Bless his heart. And so I got some cash there and put in the bank and uh, ministry. And there's a Bible student. Come on, come on. From Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Going to Rama. Yeah. Came over to Tuttle. His car broke down. Wow. Yeah, come on, come on. Wow. And we paid for it. Yes, wow. yes. His car paid. Now God brought the money from Kansas via Oklahoma, via Georgia, via Rama, via Tuttle. Wow. Yes. But he got it done. Huh? Yeah. I'm in Indiana several years ago. And uh, a guy gave me a bus. Go visit home thirty years ago. And uh, so we painted it and fixed it up and put some brakes on it and brought it to Oklahoma. And I preached one Sunday in a little word church. I said, What y'all believe in God for? They said, We need a bus. I said, Not anymore. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That bus never was mine. I just a driver. <laughs> if God can get it through you, yeah. he can get it to you. Yes. Huh? Yes. Praise but God. see, if you don't see God as your source, come on. If you have a low self-image of who God is inside of you, uh, brother, he can make you a multi-millionaire for dark. That's right. That's huh? right. Amen. That's right. I said, amen. amen. He can have a cow bring you over a bag of gold and drop it in your front yard. <laughs> if he does, milk her before you send her home. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> now, I want to ask you a question. Please don't answer. <laughs> Will God give you something he don't want you to have? No. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I told you not to answer. <laughs> <laughs> they said, we want a king. He said, you don't need a king. Oh, we want a king. Yeah. No, you don't need a king. I ain't giving no king. We want a king. Okay. It'll rain you. Give him a king. It'll rain him. <laughs> Amen. If you keep pushing him, he'll give you stuff you don't need. He will. Huh? Actually, when you go to marry, if you're going to marry somebody, go meet her mama. Because that much she's going to look like in a few years. When I, when I record wedding ceremonies, I'll say, Bubba, run, Bubba, run. It's your last chance. Get out of Dodge. <laughs> If somebody would have told us, when you marry, you marry the entire cotton picking family, <laughs> they had second thoughts. Huh? So another lady, she said to Brother Baby, said, I want you to pray that, that God give you a job. I said, What kind of job? Oh, just any kind of job. I said, Lord, give her a job, wash her dishes over here at the penitentiary. She said, Oh, not that. <laughs> Huh? Found out what her image was. Amen. Yeah. Huh? Amen. When I go into the hospital to pray for people, I, I locate their faith. I say, what do you believe in God for? Yeah. 
Well, I'm believing God to guide the doctor's hand. I'm believing God for a speed of God. Now, I can agree with that. Yeah. Now, see, God can put their pants on and go home. If, if their faith is there. But if they're not, they can't receive it. That's right. Right. If you can't see it. Now, a lot of you can believe for gradual. Anybody believe this. You can believe you're getting better day after day after. Anybody believe that? Start where your faith is. Come on, I'm come getting on. better. I'm getting stronger. Come on, you can believe, you can believe that. You may not believe for a million dollars by Thursday, but you can believe for a quarter by tomorrow. Come on, yes. come on. Come on. Better, you, you'll start seeing it. Yeah. Now that's what words do. When I say the word dog, you don't see D O G. You probably see the little dog that you used to. But then I say big dog. And your image changed. Big black dog. Change again. Big black dog with white teeth on your ankle. <laughs> your image changed again. You are in charge of what you're full of. That's true. That's true. Without trying to embarrass anybody, everybody here full of something. You full of something. There's guys that full of motorcycle rides. Oh, they're, they're in the motorcycle. They'll wear their leather, you know, to church. Well, you know, I, I'm not, if you want to ride a motorcycle, that's fine. But, you know, we need to be full of God, yeah. not some sport. Right. Right. Like you hit a stump. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, why did Lot's wife turn into a pillar of salt? On her way out, she saw a yard sale thing. <laughs> her heart was in the city. Yeah. Where your heart is, is where your treasure is. Yeah. So Colossians says, set your things on things above. You know why money bothers a lot of people? Because they're in love with it. Come on. Come on. You wouldn't love it, it wouldn't bother you. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's going to be so mature that if someone gave Brother Rose $100,000 and then give it to me, I'd be just as happy. That's right. That's right. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I've been there. Yeah. I was on 20th Street in Joplin, Missouri. A friend of mine, Eddie Wayne, passing through. He stopped at my revival. There was two ladies there, and, and, and we was talking after church. After church. And uh, he was doing something, feeding the poor, different things. And, 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 and anyway, they go out in the car and get $1,000 bills. And come out there and give it to him right in front of me. I thought, I'm the preacher here. This is my revival. Huh? Found out later that it was envy. Come on, come on. I thought I was right. Yeah. Should have been mine. Well, listen, they got free choice. That's right. Amen. Amen. Huh? Envy. Envy. I should have been just as happy for him. But I wouldn't. I had to repent. So I'm in St. Catherine's, Canada. Priest revival years later. And a lady walks up and pays one year in advance for our television program. At that time, we was on Isaac TV. They covered two-thirds of the earth out of Pakistan. Wow. Two-thirds of the earth was covered for a year with our, with our preaching. Wow. Well, she walked up and wrote a check and paid for all of it. Made the fascist man. He could have killed me. Yeah, come on. Wow. Oh, but I knew what it was. I was there a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so don't be too harsh. Right. Come on. The first come on. final closing. Galatians 6 said, You that are spiritual... Knock a soup out of those that are carnal. <laughs> Said, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, lest you also be tempted. Yeah. So you that are spiritual, you, you can identify with their faults and their failures because you've been there. Yeah. Don't put on this that you're better than anybody else. Come on, come on brother. Amen. That you got you all oh, no, yeah. you know, I, I'm superior. No, you're not superior. Everybody here is flaring. Smelleth bad. From a distance. The Bible calls it filthiness of the flesh. The 
Where there means dirt. So we are we're a dirt bag. <laughs> that means it has to be changed at the trouble. Aren't you glad God's already paid for that? Yeah. All we have to do is finish our race. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Y'all get anything tonight? Yeah. Isn't God good? Yeah. Learn to see yeah. with your heart. Yeah. See, you know why? Without a vision, people perish. Yeah. Yeah. Can I give you one more closing? Yeah. 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 Mother, brother, I've been here, I don't know, 50 to 100 times in 44 years of ministry. And these people have a, a, a little old country church and it's packed to the wall. Come on, come on. Good spirit, good revival, man. They got a building fund going. Ain't very long. They built a nice church and, and, and carpet and padded pews and everywhere. And, and ain't no way coming. Come on. What happened? Yeah. See, their vision was a new church. Yeah. But once they got that, now what? Yeah, come on, come on. Without another vision, come they on. won't disperse. Yep. Come on. So don't ever stop projects. Get that one done, yes. go to the next one. Get that one done. Amen. Amen. Yes. Huh? Yes. Amen. So the church in Indiana has been wanting to come for the last five years. I've been trying to get there for five years. Last year I was scheduled there, and it came down to monsoon rain, and they're back in the, in, the, in the valley, and when it rains, you can't get in there, so we had to reschedule for this year. I've been trying to get there for five years. Okay? This is one of the churches. They had a small church. Man, used to pack it out. Got the nice church. Quit having Sunday night. Go on. Mm -hmm. You never arrive. Trying. It's a life of striving and going to the next level. Yes. And the next level. Yes. And the next level. And, yes. Huh? Yes. yes. You give in. Well, y'all always got projects. Well, you have tents? Yeah. They always have needs. Amen. Right. Amen. Then they need new shoes. Then they grow. They need some more shoes. Then they grow. Need a new shirt. Come on. You're growing, your needs change. Yes, yes, right. yes. Somebody say amen. Amen. Don't ever keep that small, do-nothing image. Spread your tent. Yeah. For God is able. Yeah. Give the Lord a good shout, everybody. Thank you. Knees. If you're having trouble in your knees, you come tonight, God will manifest your healing. Praise God. If you're having Hallelujah. trouble in your knees. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You got two of them, I imagine one of them hurts. You have to go in your knees. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. See, it's, it's both of your knees, isn't it? Yes. Actually, it's almost bone to get bone. There's no gelatin in there. Right. You could go and have an operation and give you two brand new knees, mm. but it always hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, listen to me, I, I'm not against doctors. But most back surgeries don't turn out well. Right. Most knee replacements don't turn out well. Right. Are you specific? Mm -hmm. We ought to give God a chance. Yes. Yes. And, and Come on. that other should be the last resort. Yes. Everybody stretch your hand this way. Father, Thank you, I see it. I see it. I see you with new knees. I see you with new knees. <laughs> I see you with new knees. I see you with new knees. In Jesus' name. Now go ahead and move your knees. Go ahead and move those new knees. Move those new knees. <laughs> now you can tell the change, Jason. <laughs> I got it. I got it. <laughs> she did. She did. Uh, there's someone here that has a. Has a. I'm glad you came in. Me too, but we don't give no refunds. If you're, if you're here and you can't raise your shoulder, you've got a, a, a rotary cuff that's the bad. If you come, God will manifest your healing. Thank you, Lord. You see? Yes. Thank you, Lord. I look strange at people sometimes. Sometimes the countenance of my face will change. Sometimes my voice is changed. Because I get more over in the spirit. Lift your hands, sissy. 
Not only is the knees, the bones, the pelvic, your bone structure has lost bone mass. I command the healing power. I see right now as I'm laying hands on you, the power of God's flowing you like electricity. Flowing down your bones, into every joint, in the, see yourself well, see yourself jumping and running in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's your healing. There's your healing. There's your healing. There's your healing. I love your knees for me, Love your knees. Thank you, Jesus. Here come up. Yes. Well, we're waiting. Huh? Ooh, it's better. Well, that means God's moving. Keep the switch of faith turned on and all manifest in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. You had trouble just lifting your knees to get in the back of her shower. You had trouble lifting it in the car. You don't have it anymore. Praise God. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. Somebody else in prayer. You need? If I ever need a bodyguard, you don't want to work for me. You got one. Now, see, y'all don't know me. Okay? I do not, I don't like men touching me. Amen. I don't like men hugging me. I don't touch men. But when I'm in the spirit, I just walk up on my hands with chest. I don't do that. That's not me. That's the inside of me. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. Right. Power of God's flowing into you. God is coming. Yeah, I see you out by yourself a lot. And I see you trying to, trying to sing. And just singing and worshiping God. God honors that. God enjoys you enjoying him. And so tonight, the healing power is flowing into your knees and effecting a healing and a change in Jesus' name. You also have new knees in Jesus' name. Now pick them up for me, son. Pick them up for me. Can you tell the change? Something about you. You like to burn brush. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Go home and burn some brush. <laughs> Me and him have a kindred spirit. I do. I like to clear land and burn brush. I don't know. I must inherit it from my grandpa I never met. Sissy, what'd you need? Your knees? Uh, may the force be with you. <laughs> hey, the anointing is real. The anointing is real. I walked in the stores and like, ah! I walked into a, into a, uh, used to be a restaurant called Sambo. Yeah. Yeah. I walked to a Sambo in Memphis, Tennessee one time and walked in the door and the guy said, you're for the Holy Ghost, aren't you? <laughs> 